In this video, I'm going to give you a basic understanding of using the common toolbar in Digital Scrapbook Artist 2. The first four icons are pretty straightforward. You've got your save, your cut, your copy, and your paste buttons. The next one is your format painter, and that will save you a lot of time. For example, if you create a shape, color fillet, maybe add a brush, a shadow, or even an effect, and you like what you've created, but you want to do the same thing to a couple of other images, instead of doing one image at a time, you can select the image that you'd want to use. So I'm going to click on this butterfly. I'm actually going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard, and I'm going to click on this butterfly and this one. So now I've selected three butterflies. Butterflies, I can let go of the shift key and click on group. Now I want to transfer the formatting from this into these three butterflies. In order to do that I first need to click on the area I want to copy the formatting from, then click once on the format painter, and then click once on my butterflies. And you can see everything that was in this area is now transferred into this one. The next feature up here is your undo, and then you've got your redo, and the select tool is pretty straightforward. You'll use that to turn off items and to move things around. Over here is your shapes button, and when you click on that you can select any shape you want. Now currently I do have a green color fill and this is going to make it a little bit easier for you to see the shape I select. So I'm going to select the quick petal and if I want to I can hold down my left mouse button and keep it down and I can stretch this out pretty much in any direction I want. However, if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then keep my left mouse button down, you'll see that the width and height of this petal is now in proportion. When you're finished, just let go of your left mouse button and then you can let go of your shift key. Now with each shape, you're going to notice that there is a slider somewhere on either the right side, left side, top or bottom. And with each slider, you're also going to see a little circle. So if you drag this circle, you can get some different effects. You can just play around with the different ones and when you're happy with something, click on the select button to turn off your shape and then you can move this wherever you want. The next feature is your text button. Click on it once to select it, click once on your blank page, hold down your left mouse button, keep it down, and stretch out the size of the font that you'd like to use. Once happy, let go and type out whatever it is you want to say. Then click on select to turn off your text. At this stage, you could easily go over here and you can adjust the point size. If you're not happy with the point size, you can always move the handles and make it the size that you want. You can move this around anywhere you like, and if you want to start experimenting a little bit with the letters, you can go over here to edit points. You'll also see right over here there's a slider so I can move the letters in and I can move them out. And beside each letter in the bottom left hand corner, there's a little square. If I click on it, you're going to see at the top of the little square there becomes a rotating arrow so I can move this in the direction I want and if I individually click on the little square I can move each letter in whatever position I want. Once happy just click on back and now you decide on what font you want to use. Keep it selected, go over here and click once to highlight it. Now using either the wheel on your mouse or the up and down keys on your keyboard you can scroll through your list and you can look at the different fonts that you have. You can also pull down the pull down menu and as you go through these you're going to see a preview in the right hand corner appear. Once you're happy, just click once off of your font so it's no longer selected. Now the next button is your Photos button and that's pretty straightforward. You click on it and then you can find a photograph on your computer. Over here is your Brush button, but before I begin using that, I want to go over here and make sure that my color fill is to the front and I want to turn that off. Next I want to go into my brushes and I'm going to select the Glitter Glue Gold and then click on my brush to select it. I'm just going to start drawing anything on my page and when I let go you can see that there is a very thin line. If you go up to width you can see that I only have a 0 0.1 thickness of my line so I'm just going to drop this down and while my line is still selected I'm just going to increase the thickness. Also if I wanted to I can go over here while my line is selected and I can change the color of it. 
Once I'm happy with it, I can click on Select to turn off my brush. Now if I decide later on I want to edit this, I can go over to Edit Points, and you'll notice that there are some nodes over here, so I can stretch these, and wherever I stretch them, you're going to see that the line is going to follow in the same direction. Over here you can see that I've got a little bit of a curvature, so if I wanted this to be a little bit more straighter, I can just click on the straight portion and you'll see that this line straightens out. You can play with these to see some different effects, also play around with the flow and the opacity to get completely different looks. Once you're happy with that, just click on back and you're done. Click once off of your image so it's no longer selected. The next tool is the Freeform Paint tool, and once you click on it to select it, I'm just going to go over here, send Color Fill to the front, and I'm just going to select any color. Over here you've got different tips. You've got your round tip, your square tip, and your diamond tip. Play around with those, and you've also got your width, so you can adjust the width. I've got the round tip, so I'm just going to start drawing a little bit. Once I'm happy with it, I can click on Select to turn off my Freeform Paint tool. And if I wanted to go back here to edit it, I could easily click on it, click on Edit Points, and I can move these little nodes around until I'm happy with their placement. I could play around with some of these features up here, and then when I'm happy, all I need to do is click on Back and click once off of my image so it's no longer selected. Now with the next tool, this is the Pen tool. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to go over here. What color fill is sent to the front? I'm actually going to turn off the color fill by clicking on the little transparency box in the bottom left hand corner. Next, I'm just going to click anywhere on my page and I'm going to let go. Now I'll go over here, I'll click again and let go, and I'll move my mouse somewhere else, click and let go. Now if I start moving around, you're going to see that this is going to follow me. If I want to turn this off, all I need to do is double click and it's now turned off. You can also hold down your left mouse button and just move it, let go, hold it down again, keep it down, move it and let go, and then double click. So you've got a different curvature. Now at any time you can also go over here and you can change the right and left side of your line. So if I pull down this menu and I decide I want to have an arrow at the front and over here at the back I may want to pull this down and maybe I want to have the end of an arrow. Now I just want to change the size of it so that we can see it a little bit better. And if I decide I want to change the middle section, I also have a number of different options of what I can change it to. And at any time I can go over here and I can color it different colors. Once you're happy, click on Select and then you've got yourself a brand new arrow. Now another thing that I like to do with the pen tool, and I'm just going to click off of this, is use it on a photograph. So the way that that would work is I would click on my pen tool, I need to make sure that my lines are straight. And then all I'm going to do is trace around this umbrella. So to do that, I'm going to start over here, click, let go, move it, click, let go, and I'm just going to go all the way around this umbrella. And then when you come to the end of your umbrella, you just double click. I'm going to send color fill to the front, and I'm just going to color this any color I want. And now while that's colored, I'm going to go into my effects, and I'm just going to click on glass. And while it's still selected, I'm just going to play with the transparency slider just a little bit to drop this down. Once I'm happy with that, I can click on Select to turn off my pen tool, and now I've got a completely different effect to my photograph.